on air. I am your host Melvin A. Lyons and this month I have with me special guest Eric Garcia who is an artist here in the Chicago area. Um, we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to talk with him about but before we do that as always let's talk about some of the things that have happened in the museum in the past month or so. So first up recently the 100 Faces of War experience was aired on CBS News nightly with Scott Pelley. Um, I'm going to show you guys a quick video uh, from our artist uh, talking about the work that he did with the 100 Faces. So, here we go. One thing that stands out about this, uh, about these portraits, uh, about uh, so many of the portraits is how much uh, the people in the portraits, how much time and uh, trust uh, they put in. Uh, so the, the 100 faces uh, are meant to be uh, almost too much, and that, that's that's what I wanted to convey. That it's almost too much. Uh, sometimes it's it's just a drop in the bucket. For all the stories you read here, there's uh, for each one there's uh, more than two thousand others. The first portrait that I did was of Jeff Lucy, and that was in two thousand five. I chose to do this portrait uh, because I had no connection to the military, really, whatsoever, through my family or friends. And I uh, read about his story in just in a local paper. He lives, or he used to live one town over, and uh, his parents were uh, actually the, the ones who were involved in the story in the paper because he had committed suicide. And they wanted to uh, bring this to light. Uh, they wanted to talk to people about it. They wanted to talk to people about the fact that veterans were committing suicide. The, the painter that most fascinates me for a portraiture is Rembrandt. And the light in this project is your classic Rembrandt light. That's actually a type of light in portrait photography. It's uh, uh, a conscious choice to try to light everyone the same way so that the, uh, as a metaphor, in, in a way, you know, the, the kind of sense of equality to, to everyone who's pictured. Uh, yeah, that's, that's where it's come from. Project, um, but uh, 
those words are generated uh, from people in who were selected, not according to their eloquence. You know, they're not uh, not according to their viewpoint. Uh, so, if there's any eloquence, if there's any power to what's said here, the power is uh, of of the public. It's a you know, the power that general humanity has in expressing an experience. So again, if you have not yet been by the National Veterans Arts Museum to see the 100 Faces of War exhibit, you can find us um, Tuesday through Saturday at 4041 North Milwaukee. All right. Also, coming up at the National Veterans Arts Museum uh, to celebrate Black History Month or African American History Month, the museum has put together an online exhibit based on one of our artists. Excuse me. Ah, there we go. So based on uh, one of our veterans, Ferris J. Parker, who was a veteran artist from our permanent collection. They've taken an in-depth view of his life and have provided an, an analysis and interpretation of his work. We hope to continue to celebrate the life and achievements of our artists with further online exhibits and posts. Also coming up, the, excuse me, the National Veterans Arts Museum's Education at Hive Buzz. A day of brainstorming and sharing ideas. They also had our coordinator, uh, Chris, along with some of our MVAM Out Loud students, uh, stop by for this brainstorming session. Mm -hmm. Now, on to our upcoming events. Uh, After School Matters spring term has begun and will run now through April 25th, as well as this upcoming February 14th, uh, which is a week from Saturday, we will begin this year's Saturday or second Saturday creative community with a workshop called Hearts for Vets, which will be a printmaking workshop with today's guest, Eric Garcia. It will be from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the National Veterans Arts Museum. It is open to the public. Participants have the option of keeping their prints and artworks made during the workshop or allowing the National Veterans Arts Museum staff to mail it as a part of a package being sent to the Heinz uh, VA to be received by veterans, doctors, nurses, or administrators. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it since I've got you here. Uh, today's guest, Eric Garcia, was born and raised in Albuquerque, South Valley. Uh, earned his Bachelor's of Fine Arts from the University of New Mexico uh, earned his Master's of Fine Arts at the School of the Arts Institute in Chicago and works in a variety of mediums such as hand-printed posters, political cartoons, and murals. So how are you, Eric? Pleasure to have you here today. Oh, thanks for having me here. Oh, Great to be here. Always a pleasure. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first question that i like to ask is for you to describe your work uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, my work's... A combination of things thematically it's 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 uh, based on th three core uh, primary uh, themes of history politics and culture so all okay. those things are always very prominent in my my art now the uh, the media I use ranges from hand printed posters to political cartoons to paintings murals and um, installation sculptural work so I do a variety of stuff but it always comes back to these these three uh, main themes of history and culture and politics. Okay. All right. So uh, how did you get your start, um, number one, as an artist and then in your uh, career as an artist? Well, I've been uh, drawing since I was small, since I, as far as I can remember. And then mm -hmm. later on, I, I worked with a youth arts organization there in Albuquerque growing up called Working Classroom, having us paint uh, murals during the summers. And then, uh, unfortunately, I needed uh, some cash for for, for college. So I, right after high school, I joined the military, go see the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate enough to be stationed uh, in Europe for for three of those years. And okay. uh, and what better place to be for for an artist to soak up uh, all the the museums and art of, of uh, the Western world there and 
in uh, living in Italy and then in Greece after that. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, I used that GI Bill to, to go to school. I got my, my undergrad at the University of Mex New Mexico and then uh, the Art Institute here uh, for grad school. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you hope that viewers will take away from your works? Oh, hopefully they'll take... Hopefully they'll take some kind of information away. I'm all about teaching or expanding uh, mm -hmm. people's understanding of those three core values again: politics, culture, and and history. My my art is not supposed to be primarily an aesthetic uh, purpose. You know, it's not just for art's sake. Mm -hmm. These are these are images that I'm that I'm trying to produce that has um, layers of identity of, of politics of, of, of things that are happening now and in the past you know mm -hmm. so, so I'm trying to get out information either through a small little political cartoon or a giant mural you know, trying okay. to get out information alright so yeah knowledge is power give the people the information and let them make their choices exactly right? exactly All right. so you are currently uh, teaching artists for the education department at the National Museum of Mexican Art right so can you describe a your work there? So I'm the uh, Arte Ambulante coordinator, which means mm -hmm. traveling art. So I'm basically a traveling artist for mm -hmm. the, the National Museum of Mexican Art. And I go around giving uh, lectures to, uh, to elementary to university level about the history and, and art of, of Mexico and Chicano art here in the United States. Okay. And aside from that, I also do uh, art workshops and projects. Uh, for example, I'm working now uh, with Corkery Elementary School to, mm -hmm. to uh, do a mural mosaic at their school. So it's a okay. combination of things of, of uh, learning and teaching and visual arts. Okay. Um, so yeah, for, for people who aren't aware of that museum's location, uh, can you tell us uh, where it's located? It's located right at Harrison Park there in, in, in the Pilsen neighborhood right off of 19th Street. Okay. And the best thing about, I love to brag about my museum, is that it's always free. Right. They're one of the very few free museums that are still in existence here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I know it costs uh, a lot of money if you want to take the family to the Art Institute, but <laughs> you can come Definitely. to the National Museum of Mexican Art Institute just as, as uh, high quality as art as, as, as some of those big, big museums. Absolutely. Um, interesting story. When I first moved to Chicago back in 08, uh, the first place I moved to was Pilsen. Ah. And so I lived in Pilsen for a number of years actually up until uh, last year I believe it was. And so I'm living in Pilsen, and I was working, uh, uh, doing promotions for a festival back in the summer of 2010. And I'm just out walking around the neighborhood, you know, putting up flyers, talking to business businesses. And as I'm walking down 18th Street, I come across this museum. And, you know, I see all of the artwork on the inside there, but I'm not paying attention to the signage. I'm not looking at all this. I'm just seeing all of this wonderful artwork out there. And I made it a point to where every time I went past that block or every time I went by there would just stop and take a moment to really just kind of look in and see some of the art and um, not just in the museum itself but Pilsen itself is just full of, of wonderful Pilsen's art. Pilsen's full, uh, full of art. Everywhere. There's murals all over Pilsen. Absolutely. So um, if you are out in the Pilsen area um, I definitely would recommend that you guys actually take the time to go out um, to visit the museum because it is open, it is free uh, and also just to kind of soak in and absorb the neighborhood in itself. Um, you'll also find that there are a number of veterans that are actually living out in that Pilsen na neighborhood. Um, we have a VA hospital, which is not too far from um, Pilsen, actually, yeah, uh, the Pilsen Jesse Brown Pilsen. right over there. So, um, so yeah, so it's just a, an all-around wonderful, wonderful place. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, of the murals that you've done, uh, working in the classroom, how long does it usually take to plan out, like, say, a typical mural like how long does it take to plan out and to actually get them done so what is the process like well they could depending on the size of the mural it is would depend on how long it take you but basically mm -hmm. the um you have to go to the site you have to measure the wall that you're working you're working with because mm -hmm. a lot of the design elements of, of the mural depends on the architecture itself you know how yeah. is there is there any kind of uh archi architectural um specific specific uh things that are that are about the wall that that you could implement into the design itself mm -hmm. um, and then from the from the measurements then you can get a general idea of, of the, the thing about the cool things about murals is their community involved mm -hmm. they, they're, they're community uh, the community dictates what the murals should be about right so depending on who owns the wall they're gonna they're gonna be the owners of this big piece of art so of course they're gonna have some kind of input what they want on their wall right um, 
so that comes into play as well as, as the design as in designing the, the the overall look of the the wall so that could mm -hmm. take a couple of weeks back and forth of, of, of debating what the what the community wants on this this wall what the the owners of the wall want and almost uh, sometimes I'll, I often work with um, students in collaborating with their ideas what this design overall design should be okay so that could be a couple of weeks and then the implementation of, of, of painting would um, would depend on uh, again how big the wall is you, you would first have to uh, scaffold it and then put up a grid form a grid uh, line on the wall itself so you, you can transfer the small image of the the sketch of the cartoon to mm -hmm. the to the wall itself and then yeah. it's just paint by numbers you know just go right. in there and paint it up so mm -hmm. it, it varies depending on on the, on the size all right so now um throughout your career as an artist is there maybe one piece that sticks out particularly um, that you rather enjoy working on or, or an image that kind of comes to your mind? Ooh, an image that comes to mind that sticks out particularly. I, I, uh, I think one of the my my favorite pieces that I, that I created in the past couple of years was at the Kohler residency that I was invited to uh, mm -hmm. to go participate in a three month long residency at the Kohler factory which is a residency where they allow artists to come into the the Kohler factory which which creates these bathtubs and, and fixtures of uh, industrial design of um, bathroom elements okay and they let you use their their facilities so they they're, they're pumping out toilets and, and urinals and all kinds of porcelain objects and they let artists utilize them and transform them into something else and uh, they they particularly create these uh, prison urinals toilets for mm -hmm. the prison complex okay and I was able to get one of those and 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 create a an a, uh, almost an ofrenda, a little uh, altar piece dedicated to the incarcerated political prisoners here in the United States. Okay. So it was an interesting little piece to 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 retake it and capture it and make it into something new. Definitely, that that sounds amazing. Um, I'm actually going to show briefly um, a photo of one of your many pieces here. So, where was this piece done? So this was done. Uh, three years ago at, at the new uh, facilities of Working Classroom. Working Classroom is a youth organization there in Albuquerque. So this is the same organization I was working with when I was a teen studying as an apprentice muralist uh, as a teen. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get in contact to them much later on, almost, almost over 10 years later, and they wanted me to come back as the head muralist to come design this mural at their new uh, facilities of their organization. So this is there in the South Valley in, in Albuquerque and it basically depicts the story of Working Classroom itself, how it's, it had started from a, a small little um, uh, organization uh, ha passing out literature and books there in, okay. in Nicaragua and mm -hmm. now became a, a youth uh, arts organization there in, in, in Albuquerque. Okay. Well, again, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. And for those of you out there watching, Again, February 14th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Hearts for Vets uh, this Valentine's Day. Uh, Eric Garcia here will be leading this wonderful workshop at the museum. And then two weeks after that, you can catch myself again hosting another workshop here at the museum. Uh, check one, two. We will be doing an MC workshop at the museum exploring poetry and hip hop in the context of African American History Month. And with that being said, we are going to go ahead and move along to one of our favorite segments here, which is the Take Five. Five famous people that you may not have known were actual U.S. veterans or actual veterans here. So we are going to start with this being February, being African American History Month. The first piece that we are going to take you all to would be Mr. Harry Belafonte, U.S. Navy, enlisted in 1944 served in the Pacific at the end of World War II. After discharge, Harry made his way to New York and found his career inspiration after attending a performance at the American Negro Theater. An American singer, songwriter, actor, social activist who has won three Grammys, including a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, an Emmy Award, and a Tony Award. One of the most successful Caribbean American pop stars in history, and an advocate for humanitarian causes such as the anti-apartheid movement and U.S. for Africa, UNICEF, 
Goodwill Ambassador, American Civil Liberties Union, Ambassador for Juvenile Justice Issues. And up next, Mr. Morgan Freeman. So, Morgan Freeman served in the U.S. Air Force in 1955 instead of accepting a scholarship for drama from Jackson State University. He was in love with the idea of flying. Known for his distinctively smooth, deep voice, he got his first break as a part of the cast of The Electric Company. Freeman has received Academy Award nominations for his performances in Street Smart, Driving Miss Daisy, The Shawshank Redemption, and Eviticus, and won the Best Supporting Actor in 2005 for Million Dollar Baby. He has also won a Golden Globe Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award. Up next, I pity the fool. <laughs> Love this guy. Mr. T enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in the Military Police Corps. In 1975, was awarded a letter of recommendation by his drill sergeant and in a cycle of 6,000 troops was elected top trainee of the cycle. Mr. T's famous hairstyle was influenced by a National Geographic's image of a Mandinka warrior. He adopted the style as a powerful statement about his African origins. His well-rounded career includes serving as a bodyguard to famous celebrities such as Michael Jackson and Muhammad Ali, acting roles in films such as Rocky III, and the TV series The A-Team. Professional wrestler and Hulk Hogan's tag team partner for the WWF. Next up, Dory Miller was born in Waco, Texas and played football at Waco's A.J. Moore Academy. Dropped out of high school at 17 and enlisted in the U.S. Navy in 1939 at the age of 20. He was a mess attendant, one of the few positions available for African Americans at the time. He was assigned to the USS West Virginia, stationed at Pearl Harbor. On December 7, 1941, Japanese forces attacked Pearl Harbor after pulling out a captain and his fellow crewmen away from heavy enemy fire and off the ship. Miller secured an unattended 50 caliber anti-aircraft gun and began firing at the Japanese. He was awarded the American, or excuse me, the Navy Cross, the third highest medal in the Navy. And finally, <clears throat> Luke, I am your father. I love, I love doing that. Mr. James Earl Jones, U.S. Army. After graduating from the University of Michigan with a degree in drama, Jones was recruited into the Army after being commissioned in 1953 as a second lieutenant. He and his unit were sent to construct a cold weather training command in Colorado. He was first promoted to first lieutenant before being discharged. A beloved and renowned actor, James Earl Jones, has earned acclaim for his versatility, resonant voice, and eloquence. Jones is a successful actor in television, film, and on stage. In his long and illustrious career, he's been nominated for numerous Emmys, Golden Globes, Tony, and Academy Awards, with two Emmy wins, two Golden Globe Awards, and an honorary Oscar. I love doing that. So, so many people I just never actually know about. I didn't expect some of those uh, guys that were in the military. I know, right? And that's that's one of the reasons that uh, I enjoy that segment so much. That's so, um, as always, once again, I would like to thank our guest for coming and hanging out with us today and telling us a little bit about your art and the artwork that you do. And as always, it has been a pleasure. So, as we get ready to wrap up, again, just a couple of dates. The 14th, your workshop at Valentine's the Valentine's Day. Valentine's come Day. Out. Do some printmaking with me. It'd be great, fun times. Absolutely. For a good cause, make some uh, bets, some uh, some Valentines. All right. What better way to make your significant other happy than going out and helping others? Right. right. All right. So with that being said, workshop on the 14th again on the 28th with myself. Peace and blessings, and I will see you all again next month. Uh, before I go out of here, uh, I had to take a quick trip out of town this past month uh, to my grandfather Melvin A. Lyons. Peace and blessings. Love you. Rest in peace.